Sometimes it's hard to avoid them. Other times we can manage to slide through life without having too much controversy. During the times when things are easy and people seem nice, life seems good, the world seems grand. During the times when we like have our cars stolen or something happens to us out of the blue, you know, that's unexpected, that's causing us problems, or uh, we start to think that maybe people aren't so nice, people aren't so kind. Even some of the most civil conversations start out with uh, good intentions and end on a bad note, merely because of differences of opinion. But that's the world we live in, and that's how it's going to be. I guess the question that I was going to pose was, is a passive approach to life possible? while adhering to the principles of what it means to be alive, to be human. In other words, being a complete pacifist would mean re resisting any type of violent uh, action, even if it's out of repression or self-defense. The perfect example I want to use is Tibet. During the, you know, from 1959 to I think 61, Chinese destroyed over 6,000 Tibetan monasteries. And there are some stories of when they, they had actually followed these, the remaining monks up into the hills and they tracked them for months up into the mountains. And I believe some, let's just say like 6,000 left of the monks, you know, and only like, you know, a few dozen survived. I mean, a very small amount made it, but these were the people who fled after an attack on a monastery, which they were told to remain passive and not fight back. And because of that, they were beaten to death by those who didn't understand their way of thinking. You can look into the details of history, but to break it down, basically the Dalai Lama, the you know, the 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 monks, the Buddhists said that they believed that so-and-so was this reincarnation. They believed that the Lama was reincarnated into this little boy. And, uh, and at one particular time, the Chinese government found out that it was this little boy that they were going to make the next, I guess, Lama, the next Dalai Lama. And he disappeared. The Chinese government kidnapped him. He disappeared as well as his parents, I believe. Um, because they believed that they were losing control of their people by having, you know, these rebels running around in the hills claiming that they're reincarnated. My point here is this little story illustrates how even a passive approach of trying to separate oneself from all the conflict, people will come and seek you out and look to attack you because they feel threatened by your beliefs. And the thing is that people feel threatened by each other's beliefs even when they're not in each other's face. And this is one issue that I, I guess I really have to ponder a lot more because all of us have been confronted about things that we think or believe or feel by others who decide that they're going to tear us down because of that. Now I'm not even talking about religion or politics or any of these things here. I'm talking about everything. I mean everything that we think. You know, all our different opinions or theories or ideas, people find it necessary to, rather than explain their point, basically just annihilate someone, metaphorically or literally. And uh, through history, it's been easier for those people to go around, like, let's say, the Crusades, uh, if you want to go to the religious side of it. Take Christianity? No. <laughs> Take Christianity? No. <laughs> you know. Let's kill people who don't believe what we believe. I mean, these are 
these are things that we can look back on in history and say, well, that was a horrible time and people were ignorant then, but they weren't. People had cities, ships, monetary systems, governments. This was not a uh, just fluke, you know, ooh, ooh, mankind is, uh, you know, cavemen that brute mentality. This is a recent days. I mean, you can even bring it more recent to slavery and uh, the things that we've done to other humans you know, in the name of preserving ourselves. It's pretty ludicrous a lot of the time, but slavery is totally different. Uh, ball game altogether. That's not uh, pressing views. That's just saying work for me because I need to make more money. Uh, you know, that's a totally different thing, but you know, they always leads to <coughs> some sort of, uh, you know, ad hominem attack on the person, something irrelevant to the conversation. People use a lot of fallacies, you know, and try to turn things around on the person. And, uh, for example, a conversation I had with this guy earlier, it was on this old video I had um, about, I can't remember what it was, uh, oh, I said everything is a, everything is a hoax, right, was the name of the video. And in the video, I was clear to say that, you know, a lot of these stories have been blown out of proportion. Many of the people may be actors or liars, I don't know, but to say the event never happened is ludicrous, you know. I had someone tell me the other day that there's nothing going on in the Middle East, that, you know, there's no bombs in Israel or Palestine, you know. Some people even think these places don't exist, and, you know, it's a delusion that we've created in our minds, but, you know, that everything's a lie, you know. But it's not. A lot of it's true. And all I was just trying to do is explain to the guy that, you know, some of it may be true, some of it may be not. And he just said, basically, no, you're a dumb dumb. you know, you're stupid, you know. And I said, well, you know, I'm not stupid. I just have different opinions than you, and I believe that it's, uh, it's unhealthy to think that everything's a lie, but uh, we have to sort through and find out what is. And he uh, took off for a while, whatever, came back and said um, something to the effect of, Oh, you're a stoner, you must be basically a dumbass, you know. Or smoke another bowl, you know. Make your brain more confused. You know how many times I've run into people like this? And this is the one example I like to use. Because it's a way that people use something that one person does that they don't do. And uses, as, uses it as a way to make themselves feel superior. And this is the same way that those feel who are in office who decide that we're going to invade Tibet, let's say China invades Tibet because we feel threatened by what they think and what they believe. One of the, one of the funniest things is how people, how people feel threatened by those who have clout, by those who have ethos, by those who have those who listen to them. In other words, you will see people who will find others who have a following or, for example, YouTube's a great example. Some of the channels that have a lot of subs and talk about controversial subjects have a lot of trolls and attackers uh, that will just totally tear into the person. And you'll find it happens more to those who have a lot of subs because the people feel that this person's influencing a lot of people. In fact, I've been attacked by a lot of Christians on the same regard, you know. Uh, it seems like, you know, in the beginning it didn't matter what I talked about because I didn't, you know, didn't really have very many subs, but it, all of a sudden when I get a few more subs, then people start feeling threatened because I have an opinion. And, uh, I don't mean that, uh, Partially, just it, it's like why should my opinion affect anybody else's way of being? Why should I? You know, I've been called things like a false prophet. You know, it's like well, I'm not even a prophet. I'm not, even, I'm not even prophesying anything. I'm just a guy talking. You know, but people have these strong opinions about the way they think the world is and the beliefs that they have. It just takes a level of just tolerance and acceptance. Which brings me back to, to what level do you have to be passive and tolerate people and their nonsense. For me, I get very verbally uh, outspoken when people, I feel people are not wronging me, 
Because the one thing I've learned is I can handle myself. But when I see somebody harshing on someone else, they can't defend themselves, I feel like I have to protect them. I guess that's a kinship I feel with people. Um, especially people who try so hard to be kind and nice, but may, and then they get attacked by somebody for their ideas, but they maybe attack their spelling or their grammar. Um, it's, it's, it's a constant, it's a, it's a major xenophobic type issue that we have. You know? The fear of other cultures, the fear of the other ideas, the fear of things that are different. And this is what causes so much strife and violence, misunderstanding. I don't know what's right and wrong as far as, you know, how to operate a society or how to, uh, how to deal with people who think differently, but I think the passive approach is the best so long as no one's getting harmed. I guess I'll leave it at that. I didn't really get much accomplished, but I was hoping I would have some revelation during that video. <laughs> Peace out, everybody.